Welcome back to the fourth part in this series where I see if I can beat Final Fantasy 7 using a class system. On the last episode we had just recovered from a terrible date with Bart and we find ourselves here in the Temple of the Ancients where we are about to be attacked by a wall Hello. demon. Yes, that is happening right this very moment. Yes, that's happening. So I was initially quite worried about this fight because I remember having a lot of issues with it previously when I played this game and he has a massive 10,000 HP. So I was like, okay, I know this guy can deal a lot of damage and takes a while to die. And you're seeing the effects of that right now because Claude just took over 1,200 damage to that hit right there and uh, this guy's quite quick and he can pump out quite a lot but like I said I went with a very very defensive uh, grouping this time around using uh, both Bart and Steve I mean we're forced to use Steve but it's good that we have Steve because it just means we can do some very reliable healing and you know I feel like I've been too harsh to Steve in ignoring her for this long and I feel like after we leave this temple I'm going to use Steve more often you know I feel like I just have neglected her and I want to use her it's unfair of me to just assume that she's gonna randomly disappear on us because like she would never do that to us I, I believe she is in love with Claude and yes our heart did previously belong to Bart but it has since been smashed to smithereens so I think it's time that we gave Steve a shot maybe Steve is the one for Claude in the end and uh, we're gonna use this time that we have right now to make Bart a little bit jealous because that's just the kind of guy Claude is or that's why I've decided he is and uh, you just saw there Bahamut come out and that's very very good that we picked up Bahamut and then we just so happened to have Bart in our party because that dealt a big chunk of damage to him and uh, now we're seeing Titan. I'm just using everything I have because I don't want this guy to get too many turns in. I just want to destroy him while I can. But uh, yeah, Titan did seem to do that much damage. We were much better off using uh, Bahamut. But we've used our one charge of Bahamut, so we can't use it again. I don't feel too threatened anymore with both M Barrier and Barrier up as well as using uh, Steve's Limit Breaks to heal us back up again. It feels like this fight is not going to be as challenging as I first thought and that's really handy and uh, what else is handy is that our limit breaks have charged up extremely quickly and we can use a big old damaged Klim Hazard here using the Nail Bat as well which doesn't have any Materia slots but deals huge amounts of damage and you can see there over 2000 is awesome that's like a fifth of its HP already gone and then Big Shot does another extra fifth so with the limit breaks and the healing and the barriers that we have and the Bahamut that we just picked up being super powerful. Turns out I had nothing to be afraid of this whole time and we defeat it very easily thanks to some very well planned timings and planning on my behalf. Was any of that a coherent sentence? Absolutely not. But we've killed the demon wall and now it is time for Caitlyn to sacrifice herself and before she does so she's going to give us a little bit of a fortune before she goes and Steve wants to know whether herself and Claude are meant to be an item or not and this is perfect. Bart has to sit there and listen to this and cry while he sees that actually yes me and Steve are meant to be together and he can do nothing about it so thank you very much Caitlin for uh, letting us know that and crushing Bart's heart like he did to us when we had that date previously. She says poor tofu as if tofu's going to care and uh, I feel like nobody knows about mine and Bart's little thing and I quite like the mystery of that everybody just assumes that Claude and tofu are the couple to be but it turns out me and Bart have been slamming each other's meat since the game began. So, uh, you know, there's that. And we have this very traumatic scene where Caitlyn decides to sacrifice themselves for the greater good so that we can have the black materia. But of course, it comes at the cost of our best friend Caitlyn, everybody's favourite character. And you can see here the temple is imploding on itself with Caitlyn trapped inside. And unfortunately, there is just nothing that we can do about that. And Claude is just so distraught about this that he's starting to act out and he decides to go ahead and give the black materia to our arch nemesis Sephiroth so that he can destroy the world. Because if the world ain't got Caitlyn in it, then it isn't a world that is worth living in, right? And you get this cool trippy sequence here where uh, you can see Cloud, Claude even, sorry, is running towards Sephiroth and baby Claude is like, stop it, stop it, no, what are you doing, stop, stop, ah! No matter what you do, 
he will always give the materia to Sephiroth. But I love these trippy little sequences. The game is uh, full of these. And they really break up the normal sequences of the game. Like, look at the crazy filter that's on this screen at the moment. Look at the weird visuals of Cloud running into Sephiroth's body in slow motion while a baby ghost Cloud just, like, wanders around. It it's, it's something that, like, no game has ever quite captured in the same way that Final Fantasy VII does. And it's just very, very cool. And then once we come out of this sequence, the camera is zoomed way out and you can see reality of what he has just done. And I don't know, the storytelling in this game is just phenomenal and it's all due to these trippy sequences. The game kind of sets up its own laws of collecting items and things like that and then proceeds to break the fourth wall. But in a way that isn't just like looking at the camera and talking to the player. What? Oh! Oh, hello but by breaking the rules that the game has set. Whenever you pick up an item, for example, a little text box appears that says you have received this item and the giving away of the materia coming up as if an item has been collected, but instead you are handing it over to someone else. It's a way of breaking the fourth wall that doesn't feel completely cringy and cheesy, you know? I know, right? And here we're seeing how Claude is like starting to get to his breaking point where he's realizing that like something is very, very wrong with him. Like why has he done that? And Steve is being nice and saying it's not his fault, but like, it clearly is. If he didn't do that, we would be fine. But then we get um, <laughs> some more trippy scenes where, uh, oh, okay, Steve's a, a statue. And, Hello. oh, hi, Steve. Nope. Okay, she's gone. Oh, okay, you're going to fall from the trees now. Oh, and I'm going to fall from the trees as well. We're, we're here together. Wait, Steve, don't go. I'm coming after you. Why can't I run? Hello, Claude. You're dreaming. Oh. Hey Sephiroth, what's up? We must stop that girl soon. Okay, work. So we wake up from our dream and we're being lectured by our ex-boyfriend and Tofu about how everything is our fault. And it's like, yeah, okay, I get it, Bart. You now officially have a reason to be mad at me. He's just doing this because I was mad at him and now he has an excuse to be mad at me. So he's just taking it like to the extreme. I mean, very, very mean. And uh, Claude is just, uh, Going a bit nuts, this is like the breaking point of Claude, where he's just finally admitting that like, I'm just scared. Like, I don't know what is going on with me. I keep doing crazy stuff and uh, Bart is not really helping. It turns out Steve has gone missing and instead of looking for her, we're gonna go take a break and go to Wutai and do a little side story because uh, Steve can wait, you know, Steve loves me. Steve will wait for me while I go and do this important mission. Sure, Dan. So here we are with Goofy and some Shinra soldiers and we actually get ambushed and we're like goofy you better not be behind this and she's like i ain't got nothing to do with this so here we are fighting these lovely little soldier men and i'm using a party of tofu and mid simply because they have the highest strength of all of our characters and as you can see all of our materia has gone missing so strength is really the only thing that matters and i guess hp and defense and all of that but we need to be able to kill things quickly without using magic so Mid and Tofu are just like the obvious uh, go-to people. And yeah, it turns out Goofy has stolen our materia. And luckily we make very good work of these soldiers. They're not very difficult. It's just a uh, stab, 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 you're dead. And now it's time to get our materia back and kill Goofy, I guess. Like Goofy's gotta go. I'm sorry, you can't be stealing from us. We're literally trying to save the world and my soon-to-be girlfriend has gone missing and you're out here stealing my materia as if I'm not trying to save the world and all of that. So uh, Goofy is definitely out of the party forever. There's no way we would ever let her back. Luckily, we got loads of really good items from the Temple of the Ancients that have no materia slots and instead have massive strength boosts. So this is like the perfect time to use it. It's kind of designed for this. It's just a shame that Steve isn't here to enjoy this vacation. Don't worry, Steve will be back. I guarantee it. Steve will be in our party again in no time. She just needs a little bit of a break because I'm stressing her out maybe. I don't know, but uh, Steve will be back. Don't worry. Anyway, back to our stats here. And as you can see, Tofu's strength is at 92, which is far greater than Mid and Claude's strength is. And it's due to the Gigas armlet that she has equipped. It gives her a huge strength boost, but also means that none of her materia can grow, but we obviously don't have any materia at the moment, so that's not an issue. And nowhere does it say that this is what the Gigas armlet does, but I'm happy I found this out and I'm happy that she has it. So here we are in Wutai and we pick up the MP Absorb material, which is very handy. We can give that to Tofu. Uh, 
Okay, never mind, but we do also pick up the Choco Feather from the shop which we can give to Goofy if she ever joins our party again, and it's not looking very likely. As we finally catch up to Goofy and she gives us a very heartfelt speech about her backstory and about how her hometown of Wutai has just turned into a tourist trap and she misses what it used to be and she can't live up to what her father expects her to be and it's very very nice that we get this lovely lovely moment with Goofy. Listen Goofy, I don't care about the history of Wu Tai or your feelings. Claude clearly does not care. He's just like, dude, I just want my materia back. I don't care about your hometown. I don't really care about you. Just give me my shit back. Which, <laughs> which is brilliant because uh, realistically, that is what you would say in a moment like this. But maybe Claude is being a bit too harsh and it feels like Goofy has changed over a new leaf. Because like, if you have a leaf and you turn it, it's the same leaf. <laughs> And she tells us to switch the lever on the left to get our materia back. So what reason do I have not to believe her? You know, she's never lied or cheated or stolen from us ever before. So of course she wouldn't- Um... We're just gonna pretend that didn't happen, okay? Eventually we catch up with Goofy again, but this time she's been captured by Shinra. And who could be the mastermind behind all of this? Ho ho. <gasps> oh my god, it's- Santa Claus! Ho ho ho! Merry Christmas! No, no, of course not. It is none other than Corneo, the sleazy douchebag we met in Midgar who tried to sleep with us, and he's come back for seconds it seems, but he ain't having any of Claude now. Claude has been through a lot, he knows not to trust big men anymore, and I guess we gotta go stop him, because he has Goofy, and we need Goofy, well we need her materia, because it's our materia, not hers, but she stole it, so we need to get it back. Do you get it? You get it. This part of the game is, is kind of sucky right <laughs> but here we are uh, we're on top of the giant statues of Wutai the Mount Rushmore of Wutai as it goes and we need to defeat this very powerful enemy coming up called Raps and I remember this guy because he uses a Roga and it deals a ton of damage to us so I've got mid in the party and I'm going to try and use his mind blow limit break because that way we can remove his MP so that he can't cast Iroga and we can deal with it a lot easier. This is one of the more challenging fights in the game because you don't have any materia to protect you but luckily we've already been to the Temple of the Ancients and got some powerful weapons and we also have Bart's cheesy limit break that literally only ever comes in handy for this one fight. So uh, as you can see Bart's limit break has already filled up which is perfect so when we go into the next battle we will be super duper prepared and here we are on top of the statue where Goofy and Elena are chilling out on the eyes I guess but then once we get into the fight you can see that actually Elena and Goofy are not chilling on the eyes and I think they missed a real opportunity there to have them sitting on the eyes the entire time during this fight but they don't and that sucks but here we go using Mind Blast from Bart which deals 300 MP damage to Raps completely eliminating his MP meaning he cannot cast a Roger on us and now we are feeling pretty safe and then we get a boost jump off from mid and this boss only has 6000 HP which uh, if we hadn't been to the Temple of the Ancients probably would have been a bit of a problem but as you can see there mid just did over 3000 damage with his limit break and then Claude gets his limit break and does an additional 3000 damage to him completely destroying him so yeah that's usually one of those fights that is really really difficult in a regular run but having already known what this guy can do and also having already been to the temple of the ancients meant that that fight was kind of a joke so uh hey that's raps out of the way Bye, bitch. <laughs> but i think it's time we bid farewell to corneo i can't even remember what this guy's intention is other than just like stealing women and being a bit of a sleazebag but even shinra are against him now so naturally we let him fall off of a cliff and die now that we've finally saved Goofy's life, she decides to return the MP Absorb Materia back to us, which is perfect. And she also gives us all of the rest of our Materia. Hallelujah. But instead of us saying, okay, thanks for the Materia, you can piss off now, we decide to let her come back with us. I don't know why she would even want to or what business she has with us, but she's still here with us. And as you can see here, she has given us our Materia back but it is completely randomized. So nobody is in the job that they're supposed to be. Everyone has been given completely random materia and I have to spend the next five to 10 minutes swapping everyone's materia, looking at the chart to see who had what, putting it in the right place, sorting out everybody's weapons and armor. <gasps> 
It takes a while, but eventually we get back to normal and we can finally continue the adventure like planned. Because Steve's missing and I need to find my new girlfriend. Like, we have completely neglected anything to do with Steve. Like, she could be dead for all I know. Obviously, she won't be dead because she's powerful as hell and nothing could ever kill her. So, that's it. No more messing around. We're going back to the Forgotten City and we're finding Steve, okay? No more detours. No more running around Wutai, climbing up towers, defeating every foe to become the most powerful ninja in all of the land. Okay, we're gonna do just that, actually. Okay, so the first match here is against Gorky. And do you remember when I first assigned these classes? I gave Goofy the added effect materia. And I was thinking about these fights in particular because you can equip the added effect materia onto Choco Mog and you can also equip it onto the time materia. But as you can see, once you equip it to the Choco Mog materia, you can inflict stop on them by just attacking. So here we are. We've inflicted stop and this guy does have a barrier up, so we are not doing very much damage to him. But honestly, it kind of makes these fights a bit of a joke. So we get Gorky down and next up we have Shake, who is like the speed guru. And I'm like, oh gosh, how am I going to outspeed this guy? He's surely going to kill me. I definitely can't just attack him and inflict stop again. Oh, okay. Yeah, we do just that. And uh the same thing happens for the next fight and the next fight after that. And I do love that every time you hit this guy, it's like he gains consciousness for a split second while he's paralyzed, like... I'm gonna get you! Leave me down! Haha! -ha, finally, I'm free! Okay, so now it is time for the final boss of the Pagoda. We have climbed each floor, we have very easily defeated every other opponent thus far, and now we are up against Goofy's father. And I'm thinking, okay, this can't be too hard. He does have a lot of HP, like 10,000 HP is the same as the Demon Wall. And we had three very strong characters dealing damage to the Demon Wall. And here we only have Goofy, and Goofy can't really do much offensively. You know, she has some good tech, she has steel, she's very fast, but she can't deal damage very well. And turns out this guy is immune to stop. We try attacking, we try using Death Blow, the Choco Mog Materia, and it doesn't seem to work. So we have to actually deal with this enemy properly, and we can't cheese the fight like we have for the previous ones. And this is the first time that this challenge run has actually felt like a challenge run because honestly Final Fantasy 7 is pretty easy and uh, I haven't really put very heavy restrictions on that and I addressed that in the first episode so uh, you know we all know this is an easy challenge run it's not really a challenge run it's just me being a goofball and uh, you know having a bit of fun but this time it actually feels kind of challenging I had to do a little bit more you know digging around I had to strategize a little bit more to get through it and I'm just kind of testing out what this guy can do. Goofy can't heal herself, so we have to rely on high potions, which is a little bit annoying. But she does also have a limit break that heals her up called Clear Tranquil. And as you can see, we are about to use that in a second. And it's quite good because your limit break charges when you take damage. And it means that her, she, can, she can just heal. She can heal when she takes damage because her limit break charges. And then she can heal because she has a limit break that heals her. And it's called Clear Tranquil. And she uses it when her HP is low, which happens when she takes damage from the enemy and then she can heal it up so that the damage doesn't mean anything anymore and then she can take more damage but then she can heal it up again mama kudos for for saying um, that yeah, for spilling like seriously so that's how fighting works in this game and in most games that you play usually sometimes it doesn't but most of the time it does you know um so yeah, we have counter attack, which is very handy. Counter attack is very nice. And then Trine comes out. And this here is a problem. It does about 800 plus damage to us, which is great because it charges our limit break straight away. But we need to make sure we have at least like 900 HP at all times because he can use Trine at any time and just destroy us. So uh, definitely a little bit tricky, but nothing we can't handle. We may not be doing too much damage, but our healing is reliable enough. And I'm feeling on it that I feel like this will still be possible. We just have to be cautious. Luckily, having haste on us helps as well. It means that we can consistently get out about two turns before he can only get one turn out. So, uh, yeah, not too bad. It's just going to be a long and slow fight. But I ain't worried. I mean, Goofy, Goofy's a tough gal. She knows what she's doing. She's got a weird, like, the penis! foreskin thing on her arm. Like, why, why does she have that? What is that? What What is it? Is that practical? Does it do anything? I don't know. But um, 
Yeah, he casts Mini on us or Toad, but I pre-prepared for that. I have an item that stops Mini or Toad or whatever the state ailment is. I have an accessory that prevents that from being a thing on me. I can't, I can't, you know, I'm immune to it. That's what I'm trying to say. I'm immune to Mini or Toad because I knew he could do that. And now he can't do that. So that's good because we don't want that to happen because we rely very much on our physical damage. She doesn't have any spells. She has like Choco Mog, but like we run out of that very quickly. And the only thing we can do is use our physical damage. So if we were inflicted with Toad or Mini, that would be a problem. Anyway, he casts Bio 2 on us and actually gets the poison out. And I don't think I had any antidotes at this point. So uh, the damage from poison is definitely going to stack up. And I'm like, crap, okay, this is getting a little bit scary. Luckily, Greased, Greased lightning, lightning there does quite a lot of damage. But then this happens. Uh, yeah, he casts Cure 2 on himself or, you know, just heals himself for about 1200 HP. And I'm like, okay, as long as he doesn't do that too often, we should be fine. And uh, as the fight goes on, as I keep progressing, he just consistently keeps on using this curing spell. And I don't really know why. And I start to get a bit stuck and panicky. And I'm like, oh crap, I just don't really understand how I'm supposed to deal with this. It feels like he does it like every other turn. So um, eventually I end up losing. It goes on and on for a while. And I start to run out of steam and we die. So this is our first ever game over. Really? Yeah. Oh, I feel so bad for you. Are you okay? But it's it's not really a game over because uh, if you lose this fight, you don't really get a game over. You just get to try again. But um, okay, it's time to change the tactics up. I go ahead and equip the magic shuriken because it does more damage, but it has less materia slots. But that should be fine because we don't need the added effect materia anymore because we know that he's immune to stop. So it's okay to not have as much materia equipped. And I remove some other spells just so that her physical damage is a bit higher. And I'm ready to go back into the fight again. And it turns out when this guy gets to around half HP, he will always counter attack with a cure spell. I didn't realize that is what was happening because it didn't feel like every attack I was doing he was countering. And that's because he cannot counter your counter attack. So the way to do it is as soon as he gets to half HP, only ever attack with your counter attack. Do not ever press the attack button, just wait for him to hit you and then you can strike back and get his HP down. It's quite slow because counter attack doesn't always go off, but luckily you can get in a bit more damage with Grease Lightning because that does more than 1200 healing, it does around 13-1400 damage. It's okay to use it because you're chipping away a bit, he can't out heal your damage. So yeah, it's a slow fight. It is definitely slow, but we have a reliable way to win now. I cannot see him defeating us any other way because we don't attack as well. We can just stay on the menu and heal ourselves whenever we take too much damage. So uh, feeling good. It feels like this, this time we're going to conquer it. And we do. We get him down after a very, very long time. But that is a very big, scary boss out of the way. Probably the most challenging one we've fought yet. In fact, it definitely is. It's the only one we've actually died against. So uh, yeah, that is that milestone completed. Okay, Steve, I'm coming for you. Don't worry, just as long as I can get off this beach. <laughs> oh. Okay, so once we're in the Forbidden Forest, we pick up the Kujata Materia, which we can immediately give to Green. We also collect the Comet Materia, which we can give to Vincent. And then finally, we catch up with Steve. And she's sitting here praying and... Uh, Cla Claude's got a bit of a headache, but that's not going to stop him from reaching his love. So uh, we're just going to go and approach Steve. I, I don't really know what she's doing, to be honest. She's just like chilling. It's like, hello, Steve, I'm right here. And then, uh, oh, Claude's pulled out his sword. Claude, what you do? Put your sword away, Claude. That is no way to act around a lady. You do not get your sword out on the first date. And uh, we can't run away. So um, I guess we're just going to stand here. Oh, okay, we're going to pull out the sword. Maybe, um, maybe, maybe she needs a poke. Maybe she just needs a little poke. That is not how you poke. Claude. Honestly, like, what is Claude's problem? Maybe he's just used to interacting with men because that's all he's had in his life and he doesn't know how to treat a lady, but, um, you're doing it all wrong, Claude. Oh, f and we got, we got a cutscene. Oh, isn't she beautiful? Wow, Claude is just like, you know, you could smile. At least, Claude, you're staring your love in the eyes. She, she looks happy to see us. Um, why has the music gone really ominous all of a sudden? Oh my gosh, Sephiroth, what are you doing here? What is it, what is that? What are you doing? What are you doing, Steve? What are you doing, Steve? No! Uh, uh, Steve? 
Steve? Oh. My. God. All joking aside, it's really hard to talk about the impact that this scene had on Final Fantasy as a franchise and video games as a whole and their relevance as art forms. I feel like this scene kind of proved that video games were not just toys made for kids, they are true pieces of art with layers, you know? And even more than cinema, you get to interact with these characters. You follow these characters not just for an hour in a film and then they die, We've had about 10 to 20 hours at this point with these characters that we play with and we embody and then to just see one of them die right before our eyes and there's nothing we can do about it. It was so shocking. It was so impactful and powerful. It's like trying to describe why the Beatles have such an impact, you know, when something has just cemented itself so deeply into popular culture. It's hard to even describe why it is so good and why it deserves to be there. But I think this was a real turning point in video game history where it's like, okay, games are meant to be taken seriously. They are not something that is going anywhere soon. And if this is what we are capable now of doing, just imagine what we can do in the future. And video games have proven that they can continue to make the audience feel something deep and special and create communities from it. Now, think about this video itself and my channel in general. I can only do this because there is a community of people that have connected so deeply with this game. A game that came out 27 years ago. And uh, that's powerful, it's magic. And uh, bravo to them. I think this is like one of the best scenes in Final Fantasy history. In fact, I think it is the best. You can check out uh, my video here where I talk about all the best cutscenes in Final Fantasy. And I go in a bit more depth about why I like this scene so much. But um, yeah, it's, you know, it's, it's Seraph Steph. We, we, we all know it, we all love it. Well, not love it. Like we don't love that she's dead. Obviously it's very sad, but we love the scene and what it did and all of that jazz, you get it anyway. Back to Silly Goofy Fun Time. Well, actually, no, not, not quite yet. So Sephiroth uh, disappears off into wherever the hell he's from. I don't know. <laughs> Flies up to the heavens and then drops a little egg on us. And uh, the egg is another piece of Genova. And what's really cool about this is that the theme just continues playing. And I just think that's like... Mm, icing on the cake. Beautiful scene. It would have been weird if they just went into like boss battle music after like one of your party members has just died. So they keep Aeris theme running, you know? We've just had to witness her die and now we have to fight, you know? We don't even get a moment of peace. No breaks. We just have to continue on. We can't even stop to think about it. Powerful stuff here, guys. Very, very powerful stuff. But um, yeah, I'm using Vincent now. Not Vincent, sorry. Sparkle semicolon D. Back to silly mode. I need to snap back into it. That's this. This is the problem. You see, I'm still in serious mode. Snapping back into silly. Sparkle semicolon D is now in the party because we picked up Comet, so he can actually start being useful because he has a very powerful spell now. And you're going to see a lot more of Sparkle semicolon D. And you're going to see a lot more of Tofu soon as well. She's uh, also very powerful. Now that we have three of her limit breaks, it just means that she deals a really good amount of damage. And the more we learn, the stronger she gets. And uh, she turns out to be like a very key player towards the end of the game. She's also got Death Blow and HP Absorb, which is incredible. It just means she can recover a little bit of HP. She also has Cure 2, so she can heal our allies. We can't heal all of our allies at once with this party setup, but this is definitely a very, very strong combination, you know? You got high magic damage coming from Sparkle, you got high physical damage and a bit of healing coming from Tofu, and then you've got some magical damage and physical damage from Clod. You know, it's hard to argue with this party. I was uh, quite convinced that this was the strongest team I could have, and it probably is at this moment in time, you know? I'm, I'm pretty pretty certain that these guys are you know the most powerful i guess uh caitlin would also be considered one of the most powerful simply because of the enemy skill materia but yeah that is the genova fight down and then we all get to say our goodbyes to steve and um sparkle just kind of like walks up to her he doesn't really have much of a reaction but tofu does tofu gives her a little pat on the head and then like runs off crying and uh, I think it's amazing how much emotion they managed to put into these sprites and that's another reason why I think this game is so magical because they were very limited with what they could do with these blocky graphics but like you can still see the emotion on Tofu's face there when she um, says her goodbyes to Steve and then Claude lifts Steve up and wonders what could have been as he carries her into this lake and drowns her dying corpse and uh, 
I don't know, I always thought bodies floated. Isn't that a thing? No, bodies sink. Never mind. Yeah, it makes sense. She sinks to the bottom of this lake. And there's no blood, even though Sephiroth stabbed right through her gut. You know, there's no guts, there's no blood. The water doesn't turn red. She just, like, is dead with no wound. <laughs> and hey, they needed to make it a little bit PG, right? They couldn't have blood and gore and guts and all of that. But say goodbye to Steve, as this is the last we will see of her. Bye, bitch! Okay, that was all very intense, but we cannot become complacent. The adventure must continue, and we have to track down Sephiroth. So, we head through this cave and collect the Magic Plus Materia, and then it's time to go snowboarding! Here we go, and I'm really, really good at this minigame. Let's go! She's dead. We finally made it to the bottom of the mountain, but it's freezing cold, we're all alone, and we have no idea where to go. How is our party going to get out of this? There's no more Steve, Sephiroth is still out there, Shinro is still doing bad things, and the planet needs saving, damn it. So what are we going to do about it? Well, you're just going to have to wait till next week, because this is the end of the video. Shout out to my Jamily members, Hugo, Robbie Rose, Jury Lynn, Francis Cooldown, Automatic Jellyfish 853, Calcourt, and then super duper special shout out to my super jams, Panos Pusher, Alex Lazilla, Soul I, Jack B, N, Persephiroff, and Docs Baitso. You guys rock, you keep this channel afloat, and I'm immensely grateful for your support. If you want to join and become a member yourself for early access to my videos and all of that lovely good stuff, then you can do so via the link in the bio, or just check out my channel and hit the memberships tab. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. My name's been Jamsack. See you guys next time.